Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today is the second episode of our look at Jaronism and his thoughts on the moon landing. So today we're going to go over moon rocks. Let's cue up the music and I hope you enjoy. So Popular Science's article was from December 10th, 2018. And the title of the article is Seven Easy Ways You Can Tell for Yourself That the Moon Landing Really Happened. Now let's pay attention to the title here. We're going to break this down kind of piece by piece. We're going to go through each one of these seven steps and realize the, the uh, preposterousness. Is that a word? It is now. And Jaron, I'm going to go through all seven of them right with you. How's that sound? Uh, Boston Celtics point guard Kyrie Irving recently closed the book on his dalliance with promoting flat earthism. Earth is still round, by the way. <laughs> you, have to, you have to throw that in there. You have to throw that in. If you're ever writing an article about flat earth, you need to remind people that the earth is a sphere. No, I think actually that's thrown in there to mock people that don't realize that the earth is still a sphere. They're making fun of the flat earth, which of course is the pet rock of YouTube and the internet. Uh, but perhaps he unwittingly started a new and unwelcome trend. Okay, it's an unwelcome trend. On the Ringer's Winging It podcast, Golden State Warriors star Steph Curry uh, a propos of nothing. Jaron, that is apropos of nothing. It means that it was not prompted by the conversation. And he was basically just talking out of his tail for no particular reason. It just came out of left field. Seemingly came out as a moon landing truther, wantingly asking his fellow basketball players around the 46-46 mark, we ever been to the moon? Asked if he really didn't think humans landed on the moon. The two-time MVP doubled down in his position. It's totally possible Curry and company were just goofing off. Well, they weren't. I mean, anybody who's heard that podcast clearly knows that. Uh... Now, he had to backtrack, of course. This is part of the thing. You can't be an NBA player. You can't make $26 million a year and say that we, you don't think we went to the moon. No, I think this goes back to something a little bit different. I think this goes back to when you are an NBA player, you're viewed as a role model. And to have you make a statement off the cuff with no basis, such as we didn't go to the moon, is not a good influence on people that are listening to it. And I think people would say something about that to him. Don't you? You think they're going to allow that? No. They will quickly make you go on Jimmy Kimmel, just like Shaq did. They will make you come out. You even have to wear moon shoes to, to the NBA All-Star game, and you have to auction them off to support STEM research. <laughs> this is what... And, and the STEM industry, uh, this is what happens if you dare say that you don't think, uh, you think maybe America has lied to the public. Ridiculous. Well, you know, in reality, I think that having them wear moon shoes to the basketball court and then auction them off to support STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math, is a very good way of reinforcing to the general public that we value education rather than ignorance, and promote learning about things like the moon landings. But the evidence that we went to the moon exists, and it's not all that complicated to understand. Here are seven ways to prove humans have been to the moon and back, okay? And again, title of this article is Seven Ways You Can Tell for Yourself That the Moon Landing Really Happened. All right, let's start with number one. We have a piece of moon here to study. Perhaps the most critical piece of evidence that tells us humans have been to the moon and back is the fact that we brought back samples to the moon, to Earth. And they are very clearly unlike what we would find on our own planet. Throughout six different Apollo missions, NASA astronauts brought back 842 pounds of moon rocks for scientists to study, the oldest of which are 4.5 billion years, years old. Let me just tell you this. If you think that we can date rocks, get out. Well, Jared, it's great that you don't believe in radiometric dating. Um, do you even know what radiometric dating is? So do you have a specific reason that you don't believe in it? Is there a particular type that you don't believe in but accept other types? Can you give us a breakdown of how it's done? If not, all you have is your personal incredulity. And quite frankly, your personal incredulity, I don't care about. Either does anybody else. Okay, just because I come up with a system and I can date one rock and I date another rock doesn't mean that those dates are correct. And the fact that it says the oldest are 4.5 billion years old, 200 million years older than the Earth's oldest rocks. Give me a break. No, Jaron, you're going to have to give me more of a reason than you just don't believe in it. Tell me specifically what kind of dating you don't believe in and why. Where do you feel the errors are? How much of an error is there? 
Can you give me any information on this at all, other than the fact that you just don't believe it, primarily because you don't want to believe it? Analysis and experiments have definitely shown, they've definitely shown over and over, that these aren't geological materials you can just collect on the fly from Earth. They're almost completely void of volatiles, uh, chemical elements and compounds with low boiling points found in terrestrial crusts and atmosphere like nitrogen, carbon dioxide, water, etc. But no, not, not these rocks, no, as well as hydrated materials. These rocks simply do not exist on the modern day Earth. Okay, now you see, that's how you present evidence. They made a statement and then they backed it up with facts. There are no volatiles, there's no water, there's no evidence of nitrogen or oxygen or the gases in our atmosphere. These are reasons that these rocks are unlike rocks on Earth. You try to hand wave them off, but basically you have no basis on which to do that. Now we can just go one easy place and just suit, search uh, moon rock Dutch and you can see moon rock given to Holland by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin uh, turned out to be a fake. Now here's where the true silliness of Jaron's story comes through. First of all, I want you to find that rock in any of those samples. You can get a picture of every single rock that was brought back from the moon. Show me that one. Second of all, this was supposedly given by the ambassador to the Netherlands to a private citizen in the Netherlands three months after Apollo 11 returned with only 22 kilograms worth of moon rocks. Now, nothing against the Netherlands. I mean, it's a great country. But what does the Netherlands deserve to rate a rock of that size when every other major government was formally presented with samples of moon rocks by the government of the United States to their government? that were measured in one or two grams. Where do they get this rock from? And why was it given, not government to government, but by a government employee to a private citizen in the Netherlands? Does any of this make sense to you? NASA has never confirmed that this was an actual moon rock. It's not packaged like a moon rock would be packaged. It's not given a providence like a moon rock would be given. This was something that somebody gave to a private citizen three months after the lunar landing. They give them a rock this big. Does that make any sense to you at all, Jaron? Do you apply any critical thinking or discernment to this? Or do you just run with it because it goes with your story? I think you're running with it because it goes with your flat earth narrative and you want to believe it but you don't want to look into it at all. wonder what the viewers have to say about that. Leave me a little comment and tell me what you think. Uh, in a nutshell, because it's not a NASA moon rock, no shit. Everything points to a mistake or to a hoax orchestrated by two Dutch artists in 2006. Sure it does. But again, if your friend came to your house and said, I've got some gold for you, and you said, sure, I'll take some, and he gives you a rock of gold, and you go have it tested, and it turns out to be a fake, are you going to believe that the other rocks he has are gold? Well, I guess the moral of that story is, is if you're going to get a rock from the moon, maybe you might want to get it from the actual people that went to the moon, NASA, rather than some ambassador to a private citizen. It's petrified wood. It's nonsense. It's encapsulated in some sort of plastic, and these guys broke it open and tested it, and it turned out to be petrified wood. Well, yes, real moon rocks are encapsulated in plastic, but by your own example that you're showing up there, you see that that one is not. Isn't that a clue to you, Jaron? I mean, maybe just a little bit. And on the plaque, it says from Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins. Again, do you believe what you want? You know, Jaron, here's a problem that you have. You seem to like to use the term, well, if you want to believe. All right, critical thinking does not believe. Critical thinking investigates. Now, your claim is that the government of the United States and NASA gave a moon rock to the government of the Netherlands. And on further examination, that moon rock turned out to be petrified wood. That's a good story. Did you look into it? Did you confirm that it was a NASA rock? Did you confirm that it was an official gift from the United States to the government of the Netherlands? Did you do any of the very basic investigation that you would need to make such a serious claim? No, you didn't. You read a story or you saw it on a YouTube channel 
and you ran with it because it agreed with your narrative of the fantasy flat earth. So we can't really give any any weight to your opinions because first you have claimed things don't work because even though you don't understand how they should work and have no information as to why they're wrong but you just don't like the results so you claim that they don't work. Now you're repeating a wives tale concerning a moon rock that was given from an ambassador to a private citizen. And you can't even look into very basic facts like the size of the rock, the provenance of the rock, why it was given to a private citizen rather than a government at a time that moon rocks, we only, there were only 22 kilograms of moon rock available from the Apollo 11 mission. And you suggest that we give a rock that half the size of a baseball to a private individual in the Netherlands? Really? Well, let's continue on a little bit and see what kind of great data and sources you can quote next. Of course, according to this site at The Sun, it says Apollo 11 moon landing impossible to fake as scientists debunk conspiracies using space rocks. Uh, it says the lunar, la lunar landing conspiracy theorists say the Apollo missions were fake, but experts say rocks collected from the moon debunk those theories. Uh, of course, what else are they going to say? Of course. Scientists now argue it would be do too difficult to produce fake moon rocks as part of a global hoax. Can you imagine? Can you imagine somebody saying that? You can't produce these rocks in a, in a lab? Come on. Uh, I love this one. Official images from 1969 clearly show astronaut Buzz Aldrin on the surface of the moon. No, no, it was proven. <laughs> I had no idea. Didn't know these rocks clearly show. I didn't know these photos clearly show astronaut Buzz Aldrin on the surface of the moon. Um, here's some pictures of these moon rocks, and later we're going to talk about the reflectivity of these rocks. And if you looked at it, they're not even reflective. <laughs> it's just, you can see reflections in this pan, this metal pan, but the rocks are fine. They're just dull rocks. Uh, ever since the Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969, which celebrates its 50th anniversary today, skeptics have claimed it was all a con. And think about that. Uh, something that happened so long ago, and it continues to persist that people say it was fake. How ever could that possibly happen? I mean, 50 years ago, and people still claim that it is fake. You know why, Jaron? Because there is no amount of evidence that you would accept to prove that we went to the moon. We can show you moon rocks. Well, they're not moon rocks. We can show you the lunar lander sites. Oh, they're just fake pictures. We could present eyewitnesses that actually landed and walked on the surface of the moon. Oh, well, he's just a drunk. The 400,000 people that worked on this project to put people on the moon, our friends and foes that monitored our transit to the moon, none of this will be good enough for you. Even with this overwhelming evidence, you still say, no, I don't believe it. You can believe what you want. I don't believe it. How are you going to convince somebody that just doesn't believe evidence? So this is where this becomes fun. So now we're going to continue in this series, and we're going to go through more evidence for you. We're going to take each and every one of these seven points, your spin on them, and just basically chew them up and spit them out. Did other governments get these moon rocks and test them? Yes. Did they have similar findings? Apparently. We don't have the Soviet Union going out and saying these, you know, these rocks are from Hawaii. So we'll continue with this series, but basically, Sharon, you're laughable. And it's just kind of fun to look at the conspiracy mindset and how it approaches actual evidence. So guys, hit that little like and subscribe down there in the corner. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care.